Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. It's early morning here in London, in uh, so um, Forest Gate, and um, and so we are we are given by grace, by God's grace, a new day. And so let us um, let us seek to glorify Him through this day. Commit ourselves, commit our lives, commit the day, and all its tasks. To our God another day so let's pray oh Lord open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise blessed are you creator of all to you be praise and glory forever as your dawn renews the face of the earth bringing light and life to all creation May we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift <clears throat> of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And the canticle is taken from Isaiah chapter 55. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat so is my word that goes forth from my mouth it will not return to me fruitless but it will accomplish that which i purpose and succeed in the task i gave it glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever amen Return to the Lord, who will have mercy, to our God, who will richly pardon. <clears throat> Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. And the collect for this morning. Wednesday morning. Almighty and everlasting God. We thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> okay, our... Psalm this morning is Psalm 
77. Psalm 77. It's another Psalm of Asaph. <clears throat> People say, who is this Asaph? We're not sure. Asaph was probably one of the worship leaders of Israel. <clears throat> one of those who lead who led worship during temple during the in the temple worship. <clears throat> All right. Psalm of Asaph. Psalm 77. I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out an untiring hands, and I would not be comforted. I remembered you, God, and I groaned. I meditated, and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart meditated and my spirit asked, Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show us favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Then I thought, to this I will appeal the years when the Most High stretched out his right hand. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, you, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, God. The waters saw you and writhed. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down rain. The heavens resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea. Your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Amen. <clears throat> I love these psalms of Asaph because they, it's like telling a story. Uh, in the first part of this psalm, Asaph is is crying out to God. He's in a place of des desolation, des desperation, maybe, um, a, a, a place of depression. He's crying out to God. He said, I, at night I stretched out on tiring hands and I would not be comforted. He can't sleep. He says, you kept my eyes from closing. I am too troubled to speak. There's a lot going on for Asaph. And he's crying out to God and he's like, where is God? Has God rejected us? <clears throat> in verse 6, he said, I remembered my songs in the night. My heart meditated and my spirit asked. Now, you know, it's, it's great because if he's really the worship leader, he's remembering the songs and he's lying in bed. He's tossing and turning. He can't sleep. He's in distress. It doesn't say he's in physical pain, but he talks about he's in distress. He says, when I was in distress, I sought the Lord. He says, will the Lord reject forever? Verse 7, that's the question. Will he never show us favor again? You know, will God's grace never be experienced in my life again? 
and so he is out he's he's at this place where he's he's he's, he's wondering about whether god has forsaken him or even the people and whether god can be trusted again to be faithful but then as i said i love because he gets he says you know he, he, he has this story he's in this place but then he says verse 12 i will consider all your works and meditate on your mighty deeds i will remember the deeds of the lord verse 11 yes i will remember your miracles of long ago in other words i need to remember what god is like what god has done for me in the past how god has brought me through how god has healed me how god has looked after me when i was in distress when i was in the worst moments of my life i need to remember that god now that i am in distress again because I feel that he's not here. I feel that his presence is not near. But I need to bring to mind that I have been here before. Or we have been here before. Our people have been here before. And God has always been faithful. So call to mind the faithfulness of God. Call to mind the miracles of God. And so he, his mind goes back all the way to the exodus. And he's thinking about God. And, and it's very likely that there's, there's a thunderstorm um, storm raging outside. The waters are, it's raining. Heavens are pouring down. And he's thinking of the, the exodus. And he says, verse 19, your path led through the sea. Your way through the mighty waters. Though your footprints were not seen. In other words, God, we knew you were there, but we couldn't see you. We knew it was you, but we could not tell because we couldn't see any evidence we couldn't see your footprints you led us through the red sea but we we didn't see we didn't we we, we knew it was you but there was no evidence you didn't leave any any evidence behind and so asaph's point sisters and brothers is that this god i can trust him whatever i'm going through right now i know that he has delivered in the past and he can deliver in the present. And so the distress the, 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 that I'm going through now. And feeling that, there, that God is, is, is far from me. Is only a feeling. Because it's not true. <laughs> God is very more. Very, very, very well. Um, the faithful God. That he's always been. And if we simply remember how God has brought us through. And you know, in the New Testament, St. Paul says something. St. Paul says, if, if God does that in Christ for us, for you, do you think he's going to abandon you today? That's, that's something St. Paul says in Romans, I think Romans 8, towards the end of Romans 8. He says, if God was willing to allow his son to die for you and for me. Do you not think that God is going to take care of your daily needs? If he's done the big thing, the, the cosmic thing, do you think he's going to abandon you in the little things? You know, that is, you know, it's, it's a powerful point, sisters and brothers. Um, uh, where is it? Um, okay I, I can't find it but another time I'll read it <laughs> it's great great reading all right let's go to the new test the new testament reading which is Luke Luke chapter 16 Luke chapter 16 um uh, hold just a second <clears throat> all right Luke chapter 16 and we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 18 Luke chapter 16 from verse 1 to 18 oh by the way the verse i was thinking of is verse is romans 8 verse 32 he who did not spare his own son but gave him up gave him up for us all how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things if god did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all how will he not 
graciously give us all the things that we need. Um, if he's done all that for you, he will do even more. All right, Luke 16. Jesus told his disciples, there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be manager any longer. The manager said to himself, what shall I do then? My master is taking away my job. I am not strong enough to dig and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. So he called in each of each one of his master's debtors. He asked the first, how much do you owe my master? 3,000 liters of olive oil, he replied. The, the manager told him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 1,500. He cuts it in half. Then he asked the second, how much do you owe? 30 tons of wheat, he replied. He told him, take your bill and make it 24. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of the light. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves, so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be, with, be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The Pharisees who loved money heard all this and were sneering at Jesus. He said to them, you are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of others. But God knows your hearts. What people value highly is detestable in God's sight. The law and the prophets were proclaimed until John. Since that time, the good news of the kingdom of God is being preached. And everyone is forcing their way into it. It is easier for heaven and earth to disappear and for the least stroke of a pen to drop out of the law. Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery. And the man who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. All right, let's stop there. I mean, there's a lot in this, but we'll just focus on the first part, which is that parable that Jesus tells. Granted, a lot of it is connected because it's about money. All right, so there is this dishonest manager. Just to say very qu quickly that Jesus is not commending dishonesty. He's using this story to teach us a lesson about being shrewd and being um, and using the resources wisely. <laughs> it's not saying it's he's not commending the man for being dishonest. And strangely, even the manager commends him for being dishonest because it wasn't his dishonesty that was that was important. It was his shrewdness. He thought. How am I going to win friends when I leave this place? Let's see how, you know, he's thinking, <clears throat> I'm going to lose my job, but I need some friends in high places. <laughs> how am I going to, how am I going to win some friends in high places? I'm going to reduce their bill so that when I am, when I'm no longer employed with my boss, they might give me a job. They might look favorably on me because i look favorably on them in um in managing my master's estate 
So you have this, um, and, and what's the point, Jesus? Jesus is saying, you know, that even though it's a dishonest thing that he did, he was, he, he thought of something. He was shrewd in what he did. He was able to say, um, I need to make friends. I need to use my wits about me to be able to make friends so that when I am in, when I am outside, those people might look favorably on me. And Jesus says, I tell you, verse 9, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. And, and, and it, Jesus is using this to teach us that money should not be something we hoard for ourselves. We are to use the money we have, the little we have, whatever that is, to gain friends for ourselves, to, 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 to gain friends. But those friends are not, te um, are not temporal friends. Jesus is saying we have to use our money to gain eternal friends. Because when those, that money is gone, it is those eternal friends that are going to be a blessing to us. We are going to gain friends in eternity. Now, um, what does that mean? I mean, <clears throat> it can mean a number of things. It, it, it can mean that Jesus is saying that, that um, when we use the money that we have to, to look after other people, those people will look favorably on us in this life. And that's one thing. Of course, they will take kindly to us. When we give, when we give rather than just keep everything we have, especially for those who are wealthy, you will gain friends, you know, you will gain accolades, you know, the queen will give you an MBA or whatever, you know, you will become a, a great philanthropist like Bill Gates and his wife. Yeah, yeah, something like that. You, you're using your money to gain friends. And you will be applauded. But there's another aspect to this. And because Jesus is talking about eternal friends, eternal dwellings, there is a sense in which when we give to others, when we give to, to look after people in eternity, in heaven, we may meet some of those very same people who said it was because you gave why I'm here. It was because you gave of your time, you gave of your money, why I am here. I am here, I am in eternity because you took the time to, to, to give to this charity, to give to this person, to use your money not just for yourself, but for others. And, and so there are that, all of this are the nuances. The point is, use your wealth. Use the money that God has given you, not just for yourselves, but to gain friends here and in eternity, to, 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 to help others so that you will be looked upon favorably by others. But if you have money and you simply squander it, or you become very self-centered and miserly, then you will not be looked upon fairly and you will lose friends here and in eternity. All right, I, I, I will stop there. The rest of it has to do with money as well. You can't serve two masters. You don't devote to money. Don't devote your lives to money and material possession, but instead devote your life to God because you cannot serve both. You cannot be devoted to God and money at the same time as a one or the other. Material possessions can become God in our lives if we are not careful. It can take the place of God in our lives. It can be the all-important, most important thing we do, we want, we desire, we crave. Paul says the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. It can make you do stupid things, crazy things, ridiculous things, um, wicked things. That love, that devotion to material stuff. But Jesus says instead we are to be devoted to God and not to the things around us. Anyway, let's stop there because I am way over. Lord, we, we thank you that you've called us to 
use our resources wisely. And you, they're not ours, in fact. You, uh, you have entrusted us with the resources that we have, the money, the possessions, the little that we have, and many of us would say. Lord, you have entrusted that to us and you have given us grace to be stewards of that, what we have. And you say, Lord, that if we, if we cannot be trusted with the little, how can we be trusted with much? If we cannot be trusted with other people's property, how can we be trusted with property of our own? If we cannot be trusted with worldly, with worldly wealth, how can we be trusted with true riches that come from you. And so Lord, give us grace to be to be shrewd uh, in, 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 in using the, the, the resources that you have given us, to be wise in the use of that resources, to gain friends as it were, to, to not so much to on ourselves and our lives, but on others. Lord, the principle is a principle that you have given us in scripture and we so so often neglect that principle that it is much it is more blessed to 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 give than to receive and lord so so many of us we would like the blessing but we don't do what you require us to to get that blessing which is to give to give to others to look out for the needs of others to be generous with our with our money, yet we would like the blessing. The blessing comes from the giving, not from the getting. And so, oh God, give us grace to know this every day, that we will be more of givers. Give and it shall be given to you. And so, Lord, may we be givers, people whom you have called to to make friends in this world with the money that you have given us, the possession, the material stuff that you have granted us so that we can, instead of hoarding, instead of only caring for ourselves, we care for others as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the Lord, we entrust this new day to you. We bring all the concerns, all the anxieties on our hearts. We don't know what this day will bring, Lord, but you do. And so we, we entrust the day to you. We give you thanks for keeping us through the night and for this new day. And so, Lord, as we begin this day with you, we pray that it may be a day of growth in the Spirit that we may become more like Jesus in our lives, in our attitude, in our words, in our actions. Grow us, Lord, we pray, so that we will reflect the glory of Christ in our lives afresh today. Help us to be of service to you and your kingdom in this world. Give us grace, O oh God, to face the trials and the temptations that come our way today. Help us to overcome. With our, Give us the faith to overcome all, that, all the obstacles in our way today, we pray. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the one who gives us the victory. The one who fights our battles for us. Lord, give us grace to focus on him today and to live such victorious lives to overcome afresh in all that we do today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord, for one another, for whatever it is that your people are facing today, physically, emotionally, spiritually, relationally, Hear our prayer for them, Lord. Give grace to all those who are weak and suffering in any way, in any pain and suffering. Lord, bring healing to that area of pain, the, the leg, the back, the shoulder. Lord, heal the pain, we pray, and give 
give strength and support to all your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, O Lord, for the world. We ask that you will bring down those who bring who causes evil and injustice. People like Putin and those who surround him. Bring them to their knees, O God, we pray. Destroy the wicked and bring them, humble them, we pray. And raise up those who are humble and weak. And Lord, we pray for the people of Ukraine. Again, we ask, we ask, O oh God, that you will intervene and bring an end to that war and bring peace to that land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong nothing is holy increase and multiply upon us your mercy that with you as our ruler and guide we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal through jesus christ our lord amen christ be with me christ within me christ behind me christ before me Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord watch over you. May the Lord protect you. May the Lord give you his all-sufficient grace today, sisters and brothers, whatever you're doing, wherever you're going. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, sisters and brothers. <laughs>